back in our town. You're delivered. Completing this quest. Oh, that was that was a very measly sum compared to the other ones I was getting. Now we need to go check out, check, check in with Devla and make sure there's no more. And please don't, please don't send me back to the desert town. I don't want to go all the way back there again. Not without Borbra. Devla, oh, why are you glowing? Devla, don't do this hmm. to me. Which job should I give you? I heard from a man who wants you to track down his son. It's He's a little weird, though. Man. I wrote down the client's... Is that... Wait. Oh, that's my village. He's just right here, then. Excuse me. I don't think so. Why? Is something wrong? When I got home, I found a note from him that said he was leaving and not to look for him. What if he's left the village? Please, you have to help me. I'll pay you whatever you want. My son shouldn't be too hard to spot. He wears a very odd hat. You can see it from a mile away. <laughs> okay. Okay. If I see him... Wait. <laughs> where... Where am I supposed to start looking? Exactly. Um, he said, what if he's left the village? But I'm assuming he's left the village. I don't have any clues at all. Uh, quests. Man across the weapon shop needs help finding his runaway son. The son apparently wears an unusual looking hat. Like, wait, wait. That's cool. It doesn't tell me anything, though. I guess I can look from, like, up here or, like, across the river at the other places. Let's see. I don't think he's... Not in those things, anyway. <laughs> it's it's not that deep. Come on, get up. Are you all right, lad? <sighs> yeah, I'm okay. You have lost health. You must be more careful. Why am I looking for a guy? Uh, with a weird hat. If I don't see him in the village, I'm just gonna go save and progress. And hopefully it doesn't say, oh, you've missed your chance to do that quest. Because he gave me nothing. Agreed. What do I keep doing when I do that? Oh, the save points must heal me. I think that's what they do. Oh, sissy. Hi, sissy. Oh, hey. How are you feeling? Better. Now that I'm taking the medicine you brought. Good. Um, by the way, are you gonna stay here today? Uh. Sorry, Yona, but I have things to take care of. Oh, okay. I understand. But next time, will you tell me a bedtime story? Wait. But next time. Oh, I don't know what I just skipped. Rip. 
What? Oh, because I said I had to go. So I'm assuming I need to find the, the guy's son. Uh, and it probably means that I need to go back to the desert place where they all wear funny hats. This should take a while. I'm probably going to cut it here and just come back when I actually find the guy. All right. I may have found it. There was a quest NPC up at the top at the lighthouse up here. I saw from down below. No, you don't have a funny hat on. Hey, you got to help me out here. You just got to. I'm having serious girl trouble. See, what? there's this girl that I'm pretty wild for, so I asked her out. But she won't even consider it unless I take her to a really nice restaurant. That seems rather demanding. She really appreciates the finer things in life. First class places for a first class lady. She's so cool. I'm sorry, Devil didn't Everyone say you had a quest. Own tastes, I guess. Wait, what do you want? I tell you, there. Wait, what, what do you want me to do? Oh, there's somebody. Hey, it's a funny hat. Hey, are you the kid who ran away from home? Huh? Oh man, how'd you? Your father's worried sick about you. Why'd you leave anyway? Because he wants me to like take up the family business, and I ain't doing it, man. I'm a rebel. I'm a I'm a rebel. Yes, we can see that. Well, perhaps you should let your father know that you're alive and well, and also explain to him why you left. Oh man. Why do people always gotta hassle me? Yeah, all right, I'll do it. But first, you gotta do something for me, man. What? The guy who runs the tavern's been helping me since I got here. And I wanna give him something nice. I was thinking I could, like, cook dinner or something. But I don't have any ingredients or whatever, so, yeah. If it'll get you back home to your father sooner, then fine, I'll help. What do you need? This guy, man, he don't eat nothing but fish all the time, every oh, no. day. Fish, fish, fish. So I was thinking he might like want to try eating meat or whatever, you know, for a change. I mean, it's fish, fish is, th okay, so whatever. Could you give me like five pieces of mutton and three pieces of goat meat? I can find the pans and spoons and stuff. So just bring the meat to his place whenever, man. Looks like we've got everything the runaway kid asked for. Let's go make the delivery. Okay. What about the girl? Where's the girl? Wait. What? I'm confused. Okay. Wait, he didn't give me a quest? Also, what was fishing tip number two? You can catch fish at some spots in the desert. So yeah, I kind of figured that out. I'm so confused about the guy up there who was talking about his girl. Oh, can't go in that door. But, uh, Hi, are runaway? It would seem we've been bamboozled. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Seriously? Uh, still, I guess we can tell his father he's alive at least. I'm assuming that means he's no longer at the uh, the town square over here. I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna assume he's not there. So, what about this, this, he literally just had nothing for me. He was just talking about his girlfriend. I gotta go back up and talk to him. He's like, sir, did you want something? Did you have a problem you needed help solving?
I tell you, there isn't enough. That's okay. It's fine and dandy. Maybe that's why Devil I didn't mention you. So we're going back to this guy's father now. Something tells me he's gonna be he's gonna send me back out again to like look for this son again. Poor bruh. Let's go, Bora. Let's go. Hola. Hey there. You're no, I haven't seen him. Where could he be? He's in Seafront. Or he was, until he ran away again. Oh, crud. Let me guess. Did he tell you an elaborate story and then ask for help? That boy is... Well, he's a bit of a dirty liar. I probably should have mentioned that. So that whole story was a setup. He sent us on a wild goose chase and then gave us the slip. Since I cannot imagine you letting this go, perhaps we should return to Seafront? There may still be a lead or two left to pursue. Good idea. We can't let him get away with this. <sighs> What's wrong? How can a son bring so much despair to his family? Easily. He seems completely ignorant of the pain he has caused. It's deplorable. I love it when you sound like a grumpy old man, Vice. Perhaps no, I, I only just sound used that to it. way because I have existed since time immemorial. How old are you anyway? Hmm. You know, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> How long is temp time immemorial? They say memory loss is a sign of old age. Well, it's still preferable to being a deplorable liar like that son. Yo, you seem looking for a kid. There was a strange kid asking people questions earlier. I think he was trying to learn how to get into facade. Facade, huh? Maybe we should go take a look. Um, he would have had to have wandered past his father. Also, facade. I don't want to go back there. I don't like it. It's too far, and I don't have my Borbra. Also, I noticed I couldn't give Yona the melon. That quest better not go away. I would be upsetty. see a guy with a weird hat come through? All right, never mind. I'll go look myself. I'm not picking up items. I'm not fighting anything. I'm just going straight there. At least now we know where he went. I ran into him at seafront by chance. So confused about that place. I want my boar, bruh.
All right, where is he? Where is he? Let me at him. Nope, they don't know. Um. All right. We just start going around, I guess. Have you guys noticed anybody who talks really weird? And you probably can't buy anything from your stores because he hasn't gone around the thing yet. I do have a watermelon, right? Raw? Yes. No. Yes. Do I have a watermelon? I don't know if I have a watermelon. Hold on. Maybe that's why Yona won't let me give it to her. No, I do have one. Where is this guy? Oh. Wait, what? Oh. Really? So he's disguised himself as one of the masked people, eh? No wonder his trail went cold. He's gone through a lot of trouble trying to lose us. I can't wait to finally catch him. Um. Oh, he's right here. Hey, you! You're coming with us! Oh, man! Why you gotta be all, like, following me and stuff? Fine. Let me just pack, and then I'll... Oh my gosh, there's a giant shade behind you! Mm. Don't turn... Oh my god, I turned around. Oh, are you kidding me? He surely aims to flee the city, though he can't have gone very far yet. Oh, um, did he really flee this? I, how do I not hear him? Come back here. Oh Hi. man, again? All right, fine. Let me just. Run. He's heading for the eastern road. Um, you're not running very fast, my sir. What am I supposed to do? Wait, what do I do? Stop. Hello? Oh. He got tired. Oh my gosh, look! There's a huge pack of shades! I'm not falling for that again. It's actually there, isn't it? Yeah, come on. Stop. Come on, stop. Come on. We can, we can be friends. Hey. Uh, dude! Like, I totally get what you mean by your father being such a terrible guy. Uh, what's that big thing on the right? No, he's actually telling the truth. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, and I shall smite you with unholy magic. Yeah. No, he wasn't telling the truth. Dude, like, stop. Can't we just, you know, like, have a powwow sesh and, like, talk about this? I love your sandals, bro. 
And your hat. It's killer. See, I'm like you. I talk weird. It's a pack of wolves, man. I told you, I'm not falling for... Oh, crap. It is a pack of wolves. It's the boy who cried wolf. Oh, what? Only one? Hi. I didn't think I'd actually run into wolves for real. You're all over this place. Are you ready to go home yet? Hell yeah, man. This adventure stuff's like way too scary for me. From now on, I'm gonna stick close to home and stuff. Good. Now let's go tell the family. And he's gone. Maybe he just got better at lying. Hi. Those wolves are like totally scary, my my dad. But this guy with a big sword, he like saved me. All right, I'm home. I guess I'll eat our daily creamed corn again. Well, I don't know. Maybe there was a reason for him leaving. Or was he just delusional? What say you, book? My booker? Herb? Yay. Devla, this better be the last one. Uh, he's not there. Oh. Huh? Nobody's here. I believe they left us a note. We decided to move to a new land and begin a new and thoroughly train him to carry on the family name. Well, that's sort of anticlimactic. I wonder what the business was anyway. Hey, are you friends with the people who lived here? No, not really. Why? Because the goddamn bastards borrowed money from everyone in the village and then skipped town. Oh. Apparently their son ran away because he wanted to escape a life of crime. But then some idiot brought him back. Ah. Uh. Well, I guess we know the family business now. To think we did not even get paid for this absurd misadventure. Oh well. Perhaps we should tally it up as an expensive life lesson and move on. Well, fun. You're all right. You're going to stay quiet, Devla. Hmm. Doesn't look like I. Perfect. Now, can I give the watermelon to my sister, please? Maybe we'll save first. Why is there a mailbox? Today was awesome. Popo made me a huge cake that was really yummy and everyone in the village has been wishing for me a happy birthday. It's fun. I feel like a princess or something. I don't feel sick at all today. In fact, I almost forgot I had this disease. Maybe forget about it too and come back home now. This is home. I'm sorry, is it your birthday? Hi. Um, are you gonna... Yeah? You bet. Really? You'll stay with me? Really? <laughs> yeah, Yona. I'll stay. Yay! Now get back She's to bed. so quiet. Okay. Bedtime story? Hello? What? I hear a voice. 
I squint and see a boy standing before me. His hair is silver, his skin pale, and he stares up at me with his hard, glassy eyes. Is this me? Soon his lips begin to move, but no sound comes out. What is he saying? I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't hear him. I can't. I can't. I can't. What? I try to leave, but something about the boy holds my gaze. I watch his face, expressionless, as his lips slowly flutter. What is he trying to say? Wait. It's a phrase. I can almost make it out. It starts with an S. Then there's an E. I can almost see it now. The letters begin to fall together, one after the other, faster and faster. Sealed verse? It's a sealed verse. The thing I'm looking for, the key to saving my sister. I stare at the boy with renewed ferocity, trying desperately to make out his next word. Dream. Dream. What? What the hell does that mean? The lips move again, faster now. I can't follow them. Damn it, I can't make it out. I want to scream. I want to tear the walls down around me, but instead I force myself to be calm. I can't do this. I can do this. And I can do this for Yona. Slowly, ever so slowly, I parse out the letters that make up his final words. Forest of Myth. Well, something tells me I gotta go to the Forest of Myth again. Just a dream. Even in my dreams, I'm hunting sealed verses. Yona! Morning, Yona. What's wrong? Are you feeling sick too? No, I just... I had a strange dream. What was it about? I just realized the AC's been going on this entire time. It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Because I had a dream too. Oh yeah? You were going to the Forest of Myth. Yeah. Me and this boy were playing a game together. What kind of game? It was called Guess the Words. I think he made it up because I never heard of it before. How did it work? The boy would move his mouth, but no words would come out. Then I had to guess what he was trying to say. Creepy. It was hard. I wanted to play hide and seek. But we had to play his dumb game instead. So what did he say? I don't know. All I could figure out was dream and forest of myth. Not creepy at all. But don't worry. I'm going to study hard so that next time I can figure out everything. We should play a game together sometime too. Sure, Yona. Did somebody order? Yay! You're the best. Anything hey, else you need? Actually, I need a pumpkin. Ah. All right then. One pumpkin coming right up. Did you find my? Really? Now you need a pumpkin. Something troubling you, lad? It's nothing. Don't worry about it. Come on. I need to go ask Popola something. Your Popola. Yona certainly has some eccentric tastes. She's always been that way. But if that's what she wants, that's what I'll get. Being an older brother appears to be a difficult job. I just need to see her smile. Then it's all worth it. It's all worth it. Oh god. Oh god. Oh no, that's that's her. That's her with the pumpkin. Um Devila, other side quests, because now I need to go get a pumpkin. No, no side quests. Okay, good. I'm taking that as no side quests at all. Now I get to go get a pumpkin. And I'm also going to buy a gourd while I'm at it. Although, gourds, I think, are sold other places. I'll just buy one of everything at Facade, because I feel like you just... You want... All of the things up aside. I'm pretty sure I can buy a pumpkin there. Hi, Nay. Let me ride on your back. Ride on your back and call you a Borbra.
I didn't know I would get like a companion in this game that just follows me around and fights things with me. There's no party system. Go onwards to glory and sand between my toes. I require sand between my toes. There must be a way to get through this desert faster in the future. Who was that? Nice by shiny. It was nothing new. I've got so much ore. I must, uh, I must be able to use ore for something here eventually. All right, it's a new day. Do you have anything new for me at the weapon shop? Nope. Don't care. You didn't have anything for me. I don't want to talk to you. Can I just go from down below? Yeah, this is a bit. Uh, never mind. Oh no, I missed. I'm covered in sand. Take care before all your health is lost. Up. Up. Yo. Uh all right, give me a melon, give me a gourd. No, I have a melon already. Just in case. Yeah, I'll come back if I need to. Now I need to go all the way back. Oh my god, I'm back again. I hate this area. Tell your friends. Going out the door to see the sand. I hate it so much, I curse this land. Yeah, yeah. I ride the woofs. I've gotten woof fangs. I mean, tusks. I didn't get tusks. I just want to ride a wolf. I can't wait till the fisherman guy tells me to go fish in the sand area. Hold the They see me rolling, rolling, rolling. Run, Yona, run. Yona, uh, I've got your pumpkin. Did you want a pumpkin? I'm not picking things up because it slows me down. Except for maybe herbs, because I still need a bunch of those. I'm sorry, what? Berries. I don't think I've ever seen something up there. Yona. Pumpkin, gotcha, pumpkin. I got. Hey, you've sure been. Oh, you're not. There for me. Here you go. I made it all by myself. What is it? Is this a cake? 
How? How? Wait, watermelon? No. Yep. Popola taught me how to bake one. I made it for you in secret. Wow, Yona. This is... Um... Well, it's a surprise for sure. Come yeah. on. Try it. Try it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this is so good. Yay. You're always super busy, so I wanted to make you something to help keep up your strength. That's really sweet of you, Yona. Thank you. Sure. Actually, I made like seven cakes, so there's tons of leftovers. Oh my. <laughs> the life of an elder sibling continues to be a trying experience. You're telling me. Was it better than the last one, at least? All right, we're going to Buffalo. We'll look at Devla from across the river. I guess I don't really need to go all the way over there. Right? Can I see you from here? Yes. Cool. Nothing else. Popola. Tell me what to do next, Popola. Also, there's probably a couple more trophies in here. Oh, there's three new ones. Yep. That's it. In, in, in no significant order, I guess. Hi. Hmm. What's up, Popola? Oh, hi. I just got a strange letter in the mail. It's always the mail. Oh, geez. I hope this letter finds you well. I'm writing in hopes of bringing your attention to a certain dream issue of concern regarding recent events in dream... Re regarding recent events in Dream the Village. Uh... I was hoping I might... be Dream... Eight. Well, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I'm writing in hopes of bringing... To your attention a certain issue of concern regarding recent events in the village i was hoping i might be able to get your advice on the matter recently there have been reports of certain evil of reports of a certain dream of evil empty curse evil okay Recent reports of a certain words and someone. Okay. That is certainly one bizarre piece of writing. Who's it from? The mayor of a small village in the Forest of Myth. It's a wooded area up north. The Forest yeah, I've been there. of Myth? Yes, from my dream. They're usually a bright and cheerful group of people. Something what? like this is very out of character for them. They didn't speak to words to me when I was there first time. I have a bad feeling about this. I'll check it out. Uh, you will? But... Don't worry about it. I've got business there anyway. Oh, well, all right. Thank you. The forest of myth is to the... I know, I know. I'm also gonna go to the scrap people because of reasons. I want to see if I can upgrade another weapon or not, or so. Oh, my mouse is there again. Probably been there this entire time. You're welcome. Okay, um... Uh, can't forget to check our friendly neighborhood, Devla. Borbra, I'm coming, my sweet. What's gonna happen at the Forest of Myth? 
Are we gonna walk in and just kind of collapse asleep? And dream that we beat a boss? Barbara, go. Blah. Oh yeah, I forgot that's a wall. Hi. Y'all want a piece of this? Ow, ow. Alright, get out of here. Broken saw. Lose. And be cost. Wait, broken saw? Hold on. I think that's an upgrade material. Why do you suddenly have them? Barbara. I guess I need you. Rusty kitchen knife. Okay, so we need to farm these guys for a hot sec. Hi guys, I'm over here, follow me. Guys. I saw that. Uh. Ow. Look at the boar attacked it. Boar, bruh. It would be great if I could, like, Hop on your back from the front, because that's where I always am anyway. Going up. Oh, I can replenish all my herbs here. Yay. Replenished. Oh my god. How can I need some work done on your weapon? Dented metal board, stripped bolt, broken lens. Come back. How can I need some work done on your weapon? Ah. Uh, oh, perfect. Titanium alloy, resecution, titanium alloy, broken saw. Huh. Okay. Iron ore, twisted ring. Scorpion claw. Oh, I can get more scorpion claws. Complex machine. Broken lens, broken saw. Titanium alloy. Titanium alloy, rusty kitchen knife. Titanium alloy. Titanium alloy. Ugh. Come back. You're telling me to go back in the thing, aren't you? 
Well, I'll do it. I'll hop back in and out. I won't be happy about it, really, but... Will this work yet? Okay. I'm not going to do it, because I believe I must have to come back here at some point. Don't want to waste your guys' time on that. Maybe I'll run through there a couple times, like, off camera. Try and get some more titanium alloy, but... We're off to see the wizard. The wonderful wizard of Forest of Myth. Wait. Oh, they're across here. And I... I don't think I can jump off like that. Let's just jump off over here. Whoop. Hi. Corral. Corral them up. Hey, you guys gonna come attack me? You guys wanna play a game where you attack me? Wait, there was three of them. Oh, never mind. Oh, they didn't follow me. Borbra. Go. Boy. <laughs> You're up this way. Let's test my strength against this, actually. a lot faster. More liver. Mannies. All right. Is anybody in here feeling a little bit more talkative than they were last time? You want to talk to me, hey? You wanted nothing to do with me the first time I was here. Like the rest of them. What's up? Beware. Okay. Beware the words. I know some words. The words? What do you mean? Contagious words. That's a big word for Elmo. Those who dream. Those who dream? Hold a moment. Why There's is a this so big? Strange new sensation in my mind. Weiss's voice rose in a quizzical it way. It is not quizzical. Oh, something's talking to him. What? Wait, something's narrating him? What's going on? The villager's body shuddered as he slowly opened his Perhaps eyes. Perhaps we should start by asking this man. Uh, who are you? Uh -huh. We heard something happen to this village, so we came to see if we could help. The mayor stared at Moro and Weiss. If you can speak to me, I must have caught you in my dream. In your dream? The mayor explained. In the past few weeks, a mysterious disease called, disease called the Death Dream had spread across the forest of myth. Those who caught it were cursed to fall asleep and live forever within the world of their own dreams. The village mayor had determined the Death Dream was spread from person to person by spoken words. But before, they, but before he could learn more, the disease took him as well. Ah! Weiss stared at the mayor, his mouth twist twitching slightly. 
I'm assuming you're talking about the mayor's mouth. Now see here. Are he you said, saying that we have been absorbed into your dream? Well, yes. Said the mayor. I think you have. In other words, said Moro. We've caught the death dream? Before the mayor could confirm Moro's suspicion, Weiss exploded with rage. Ridiculous. Preposterous. Completely unfathomable on every conceivable level. I don't even recall falling asleep. That's just how the death dream works. Though polite, the mayor was clearly trying to brush aside the book's remarks. My remarks are not to be brushed aside, fool. The mayor twisted his mouth into an embarrassed grimace, then quickly changed the subject to who Moro had seen and what they had discussed since coming to the... Oh. Since coming to the village. Something there must have caused you to enter my dream. Said the mayor. A certain conversation. A specific word. Something. Moro and Weiss racked their brains, but could find no easy solution. There were simply too many words to consider. Too many random chatter. Too many meaningless conversations. Grimoire Weiss does not engage in meaningless conversations. The mere suggestion that Weiss chose his words carefully, carelessly, seemed to... Sting his pride. It does not seem to sting my pride, you bloated gas bag of a narrator. It has demolished it utterly. A irritated Weiss looked skyward, as if searching for the answer in the heavens. I was doing no such thing. Just leave me alone already. The anger created by his harsh words bled over to Moro like a contagion. Wait, said Moro suddenly. Did someone just say contagion? Yes, I believe so. Yes, I believe so. What of it? Well, that village, that villager told us to watch out for contagious words, right? The mayor leaned forward with renewed interest, pushing, pushing a startled voice aside in the process. He must have, he must have said something, right? Asked the mayor. Some specific combination of words. What was it? It was about dreaming. Or something that dreams, or... Oh, what the hell was it? A sheep! Cried Weiss suddenly, blurting out the first thing that popped into his head. What? The others stared at him for a moment before slowly shaking their heads. After a few more minutes of thought, Moro's face finally lit up. I remember, he said. Those who dream... Those who dream. That's what he said. I'm sure of it. At this, the mayor produced a thick sheaf of paper from his pocket. He flipped through them a few times before friendly nodding his approval, approval at Moro. That sounds right, he said. As a stray sheet of paper fluttered to the ground, my notes also mentioned something about that. I bet it was the last thing you heard before you fell asleep. The mayor shook his head, his worn pencil stub tracing lines across the lone piece of paper. For the last for the last month I've done nothing but study the disease we call the death dream, he said. I mean, I'm the mayor, right? It's my job to protect people from whatever comes along. But I never expected a couple of outsiders to start entering people's dreams. The mayor paused and grimaced across his face. I should probably be taking notes or something. Weiss immediately fired back. I applaud the force of will it takes to research a dream in your dreams. A disease in your dreams, he said. But perhaps we should let it bend your efforts to escape this place instead of trying to understand it. The mayor's hand tightened around his pencil, snapping off the tip. I've tried to escape. From the very first moment I realized it was, I was locked in my own dream, I've been looking for a way out, but I don't think it exists. I mean, this is my dream, right? If there was an, ex if there was an exit, I'd know about it. He paused for a moment his unfocused eyes staring at nothing. My village was beautiful, he said to no, to no one in particular, and it was filled with the most wonderful people you could ever hope to meet. But once this disease took old things changed. It's like someone took a sponge and soaked out all the color of our lives. I just want us to be whole again. I want us to be free. And I won't stop trying until it happens. Morrow nodded in agreement. Huh? Wait a second. I didn't nod. Look, if we can be if we can be of any help, said Moro, just ask. Now hold on. I did not just say that. 
silence, Weiss cr cried Weiss. The grimoire looked from Moro to the mayor and back again, his face filling with confidence. Grimoire Weiss. Grimoire Weiss's face is always confident. Thank you very much. Now see here, mayor. You told us nothing can exit this dream without your knowing of it. But yet, you seem surprised to see us when we first arrived, yes? The mayor slowly raised his head, realizing realization dawning on his face. Oh my god, he said. You're right. You're right. I've had no idea you were coming. The human imagin Oh. <laughs> the human imagination is a limitless engine, said Weiss, and dreams are the fuel. If you can imagine an exit, then it must be so. With your permission, shall we search it out? Thank you, said the mayor. I don't know how I can repay you. Payment is not required. We are as eager to be done with this place. We are as eager as you to be done with this place. The mayor suddenly felt as if he could breathe again. He almost forgot what it was like. Good luck, you two. He called out. He called at the departing forms of Moro and Weiss. We're all counting on you. As Moro slowly faded into the misty forest, the mayor was struck by a sense of deja vu. I saw this man once before, he thought. Of where? Moro's mood darkened as he trudged through the forest. Hours earlier, when the beauty of the place was still not, was still new thing, he'd been confident they could get in, find the exit, and be home in time for dinner. But the deeper they went, the more the forest closed in around them. The mist made it difficult to see more than a foot in any direction, and moss-covered rocks seemed to determine seemed determined to twist his ankle. More than once he had for, he had forced to steady himself. He'd been forced to steady himself on the rough bark of a tree, and his hand now felt now left small trails of blood on everything he touched. Additionally, Weiss was proving to be a spectacularly poor traveling companion. <laughs> Unhindered by either terrain, terrain or physical effort, he spent most of his time urging Moro to pick up the pace and grumbling about their slow progress. Finally, after Weiss muttered something about legless turtles being more adept at navigating the environment, Moro snapped. Okay, Weiss, cram it for a second, would you? You don't have to walk. Moro leaned against a tree and tried to stretch his knot up from his back. How can this stupid forest be so big? He muttered to himself. The moment the words trembled from his mouth, a cacophony, cacophony, cacophony of insects sprang to life. Every imaginable form of buzz, click, and hiss roared out at a volume that rattled his teeth. Moro slapped his hands over his ears and screamed to be heard. Weiss, what's going on? Moro and Weiss's mouths. Moro could see Weiss's mouth moving, but he might as well have been shouting in a tornado. The insects screamed. The insects screamed. The forest howled, and then, just as Moro's ears seemed ready to tear, just as Moro's ears seemed ready to tear from his head and go running for cover, the sound diminished. Hesitantly, he removed his hand from his left ear and listened to the creatures of the woods. Jesus. And the insect sympathy dimmed another decibel. Moral began to detect patterns in the sound. This isn't random, he thought. It's not just white noise, it's something else. The insects weren't ca just calling out, they were asking a question. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous, what is it? By my pages, is this a riddle? I guess so. I mean, it feels sort of forced, but maybe it's the key to getting out of this place? Then I leave it to you to answer. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous, what is it? Answer is... <laughs> what? A seesaw? 
we even know what a seesaw is in this world? But dangerous. Why is three dangerous? Something that has to deal with two people, but dangerous with three. Oh. Then it would be people on a seesaw, not a seesaw. Oh, it's a seesaw. Weiss's mouth flew open, but before he could say anything, the word suddenly shifted. The world suddenly shifted. Rain, rain, wah! Rain, rain, wah! Shik, shik, key, shik, shik, key. When Moro came to, he was once again surrounded by the sound of insects. The cries of the insects were creating words. Words he had heard somewhere before. One with it is lacking, two with it is ideal, three with it is dangerous. What is it? By my pages. Is this a riddle? I guess so. I mean, it feels kind of forest, but maybe it's the key to getting in out of this place? Then I leave it to you to answer. I'm sorry. Is it not a seesaw? No, I'm doing it again. How should I know? Why is his mouth open, but before he could say anything, the world suddenly shifted. Inwardly furious that Weiss left the task to him, Moro sighed and gave the only thing, the only answer that made sense. It's a secret. Er, right? The sound of the insects stopped as suddenly as it began. The forest undergrowth parted before Moro and a, like a rippling wave opened the new path. What do you mean a secret? Oh. Like keeping somebody's secret that is keeping yours? So there's two secrets? I don't know. The forest arthropods are making a road for us. The forest arthropods are making a road for us, said Weiss. With, that wasn't... That wasn't Liam O'Brien. That was something else. That was Vegeta. <laughs> Pleased at passing the test, Moro moved on with his new intensity. The path offered his body relief from the undergrowth, but gave even greater cheer to his mind. As long as they were on a path, their journey had a purpose. I guess the forest had accepted us, huh? Said Moro after a bit. Why spun around to face his companion? Do not mistake the will of the forest. Ah, <clears throat> oh, man, I've lost the voice. I'm just going Vegeta now. Do not mistake the will of the forest for some happy pet you can suddenly befriend. We have no idea where this path leads. As Weiss finished speaking, the pair turned the corner and found themselves facing clear forest... A clear forest spring. Smiling, Moro picked up the small rock and sent it skipping across the surface of the water. Is this the book you were talking about? This isn't the book you were talking about, is it, Gordon? <laughs> Good heavens, said Weiss. Twice. His surprise was understandable. Each time the rock struck the surface of the water, a musical note rang out. When the rock finally stopped moving and sank to the bottom of the spring, the ripples it left behind came together to form words. <laughs> it's not. I enter through the window, but break no glass. Light? When night falls, I vanish when I might. Light? Absurdly easy, barked Weiss. Now answer it. Moro gritted his teeth and tried not to reach out and strangle his companion. He's right, after all. This one's pretty easy. I enter through the window, break no glass. When night falls, I vanish when I might. Sunlight. Sunlight. A plume of water suddenly bursts from the spring. Sunlight filtered through the trees and reflected off the and reflected off the plume, creating a shimmering rainbow that splashed spanned the entire horizon. In all my years, said what said wife softly, I have never seen such a sight. <laughs> and of course we can't see it. Perhaps I have misunderstood the intention perhaps I have misunderstood the intentions of this place. Hey look, cried Morrow, awakening Weiss from his daze. There's a house or something over there. Glancing in the direction of his friend, friend's extended hand, Weiss saw a small cottage nestled among the trees. That's weird, isn't That's weird, isn't Weiss? I mean, who would build a house all the way out here? Mora walked over and pounded on the door. After a minute of solid banging, the door cracked open and a small man peered out. His body was cloaked from neck to toe in a large black cape, while his face was obscured by mist. 
Um, began Moru, but before he could get any further, the cloaked man held up a hand, held a hand up and began speaking. I have four legs in the morning and two at noon, but end the night with three. What am I? Moru tried to ask the clo cloaked man who he was and what he was doing there, but he simply repeated the question. If we wish to engage this man in conversation, said Weiss, it seems we must answer his riddle. Yeah, I suppose, said Moro. Well, at least it's an easy one. I have four legs in the morning, blah, 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 a man. The mist dissolved from the cloaked figure as he spoke a single word. Correct. With that, the man flung his garment aside, revealing his true identity. <laughs> Just a naked old man. Y you're the mayor, cried Moro. The small man slowly shook his head. I am not- I am not the mayor, you know. Now listen to my words. Long ago, I saw a vision of you. That was not yourself. Uh, sorry? What's that mean? It will make sense in time. At present, I simply congratulate you on cracking the seal of the death dream. Now you must go to the person at the forest entrance. With that, the man turned up his heel and slammed the door behind him. Turned on his heel. As Moro watched, mist seeped up from the ground and enveloped the cottage, erasing it from existence. When Moro and Weiss turned, returned to the forest entrance, they found the mayor leaning against a tree. As soon as he caught sight of the duo, he sprang to his feet and scrambled over them. Good gravy, he crawled. He cried. You made it! You actually made it back! His left hand grasped Moro and pumped it so and pumped it so fiercely it threatened to d dislodge from the socket. Uh. Dislodge what? His, oh, his left hand grasped Moru's, I guess, hand. Dislodge it from the socket. While his right seized Weiss by the cover and swung him through the air. Gah, by the heavens, stop shaking me, fool. We have not even told you if we are successful or not. <coughs> the mayor smiled broadly and shook his head. I'm just happy that you're alive. I didn't think I'd ever see you again. Moore withdrew himself from the mayor's eager handshake with a slight smile. We broke the death dream seal, he said. At least I think we did. The mayor's face beamed as Moro's filled him in on the details. When the tale was done, the three of them laid down the forest laid down on the forest ground and fell asleep. Moro cocked his head. Okay, hang a second. This is crazy. Why would we just lay down and go to sleep? Cease your endless prattle and go to sleep. Fool. Go to sleep, fool. Fighting against the rules of this place is fruit is futility itself. Moro and the mayor ob obediently reclined atop the grassy earth. Have you forgotten? Continued Weiss. It is words that control the death, death dream. Words that allow us to move from place to place. No matter how unnatural they seem, the words are absolute. Therefore, if the words tell us to sleep, then sleep we shall. And once we do, the story will continue. With that, the trio found their eyes growing heavy, their breath slowing. And this is the first time, began the mayor. The first time I have ever felt tired since I was imprisoned here. His words were cut off by a loud, long yawn, and he remembered nothing more. They might have slept for an hour or a year. When they awoke, things had slightly more real quality to them. The mist felt thicker, the leaves greener, and it was clear that they had wakened from their dream. Moro shook the, ma the mayor's shoulder gently. Good news, he said. I think we made it. Oh, wow, said the mayor in an, in an odd voice. We did. I'm back. He blinked once, and then again, as if not quite believing the sight before. You two have no idea how much this means. The death dream was spreading through, the, through our village, and I wanted to, well, I thought I could figure out how to stop it, but I guess that, was the, that wasn't the case. I must have caught the disease and became trapped in my own dream. 
The mayor started to stand, then collapsed back to the earth. He stared at his legs as if, as if trying to remember how they worked, then glanced at Moro and shrugged. Without a word, the young man reached down and pulled the mayor to his feet. Real life may take some getting used to, said the mayor. As a wry smile across his lips, I wonder how long they were in there. You shall, re you shall relearn in short order, I sh I'm sure, said Weiss. For now, you, must, you should return to your home and rest. No, said the mayor, swaying on, unsi swaying on unsteadily on his feet. No, I can't. Some of the villagers are still trapped in the death dream. I have to save them. The mayor slowly made his way to the divine tree in the center of the village and bowed his head and prayed silently. This is a holy tree, he explained, and then prayer was finished. It's the guardian of our village's history and memories. Superstition will only make your mission harder, muttered Weiss. We should not put our faith in the gods. The mayor shook his head. Not the gods, the words. Legend says that our tree is home to a powerful magic known as a sealed verse. Moro and Weiss could not contain their surprise. It seemed the goal had been found in the most unexpected places. I say, muttered Weiss, this is certainly a stroke of luck. As the three of them said their goodbyes, Moro mentioned the strange man who had been giving the third riddle and mysterious words he left with them. I once saw a version of what you... I once saw a version of you that was not yourself. Oh, I once saw a version of you that was not yourself? muttered the mayor. What in the world does that mean? Lost in thought, he, started to, he stared in space for a long moment. You know, he said softly, this is going to sound odd, but I had a feeling I'd seen you before, too. Or tried to keep a straight face and failed. The mayor didn't seem to notice. Deja vu, right? Anyway... I figured it's just some of a, some kind of illusion created by the death dream. Probably doesn't mean anything. Moro gave the mayor a nod and, and a smile, but inwardly his thoughts were racing. There's something wrong about the mayor and his words. And what exactly is going on here? That riddle would prove to be the most difficult one of oh, all. Oh, thank you so much. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one of the most bizarre diseases I have ever encountered. I know. That's why we have to help the other villagers, no matter what. Dark Execution. Oh, it's the uh, spear one. <coughs> well. For a sealed verse, that didn't take much effort. Yes, all a touch too easy, if you ask me. It's almost as if someone was guiding us to this village. Don't overthink advice. Well, that was weird. Now I can finally return to a normal life. This is one I know. So, oh. Oh, don't tell me I have to do it for them, too. This person must be. It would appear. Oh, no. <laughs> me. All right, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do that right now. And I'm gonna. I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> So I'll leave that for the next episode. Goodbye. Yeah,